Now, when we come to the five visions of the book of Daniel, I believe that most, if not all of the prophecies were fulfilled in history. Now, how did I come to that view? Well, first I looked at the parts that most commentators agree on from a conservative perspective. For instance, the four kingdoms in chapter two would be Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And the same four kingdoms again appear in chapter seven. Chapter eight focuses on the second and third kingdoms, Medo-Persia and Greece. Chapter nine gives us an overview of history from the time of Daniel's prophecy up until the coming of Christ. And then chapters 10 and 11 focus specifically on the same time period again. Now, in looking at the hard parts of Daniel, what we have to realize is that since there's so much disagreement that most commentators must actually be wrong. And so how can we be so sure that we're right? So what I want to do here is propose a five point outline for interpreting the hard parts of Daniel. Number one, the best interpreter for Daniel is Daniel. Now there are some places in Daniel where even Daniel himself does say that he doesn't understand the vision. For instance, in Daniel 12, 4, 9 through 10 and 13, he is instructed to seal the book until the end of days when the wise will understand. However, in most cases, the prophecy does give its own interpretation. The most notable example of this is Daniel 2.44. So I titled my longer book, In the Days of These Kings, because the angel actually tells Daniel that the Messiah's kingdom would come in the days of these kings. And in context of the passage, that must mean in the days of the Roman Empire. Now, the burden of the first vision of Daniel and the whole book of Daniel is to tell about when Messiah's kingdom will come. Now, there are some futurists that want to apply verse 44 to speak of the end times. However, the text speaks of the overcoming power of Messiah's kingdom to break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And that's the overarching message of Daniel, that when Messiah comes, that he will rule over all the nations. Daniel tells us Messiah's kingdom will advance in the whole world from generation to generation. Christ's dominion is given to the saints of the Most High. And our purpose as his people is then to work toward that vision that all people, nations, and languages will serve and obey him. Number two, each successive vision is a recapitulation and an elaboration of the vision that came before it. Each time Daniel is given a vision, there are greater specifics that are added. In Daniel 2, it speaks of four kingdoms, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Daniel 7 does the same thing, except this time, and the fourth kingdom is examined more closely, and there's special emphasis paid toward the ten horns of the beast and then the little horn. Daniel 8 then focuses in on Medo-Persia and Greece, Daniel 9 gives the time period when the Messiah will come. And then Daniel chapter 11 and 12 deal more specifically with the Persian kings, the kings of the north and the kings of the south, and then finally the Roman Empire. Number three, the burden of the prophet Daniel was twofold, the restoration of the temple and the coming of the divine Messiah. First Daniel speaks of the destruction of the temple by Nebuchadnezzar in 586, and he predicts that the temple will be restored after the 70 years in fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah in 516 BC. So the prophecies of Daniel have to do with all the kings and kingdoms that sought to have dominion over God's people, the Jews, the land of Judea, and the welfare of the temple at Jerusalem. Daniel also looked for the coming of the Messiah, the throne room of heaven would establish a direct presence on earth. The stone temple at Jerusalem would become obsolete and subject to destruction. The wise who are written in the book of life would receive eternal life and become part of the new covenant and the living temple of God. This is the burden of Daniel in 9 verses 26 and 27 and 12 verses 1 through 13. Number four, the significance of the fourth kingdom is centered in the time when the Messiah and the kingdom of God would appear on earth. So the majority of conservative commentators are in agreement that the four kingdoms mentioned in Daniel are Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. But then when we get into the fourth kingdom, they get into disagreement over when does this Roman period extend into? Does it culminate in AD 70? Does it include the Middle Ages and the Roman Catholic Church? 
or does it extend into the future when there would be a revived Roman Empire and an Antichrist figure? The common thread among conservatives is that the Iron Beast somehow refers to Rome, either in ancient imperial times, the Middle Ages, or through a future revived Roman Empire. However, there is vast disagreement on who is the little horn of Daniel 7 verses 8, 24, and 25, and who is the willful king of Daniel 11 verses 36 through 45. Number 5. Pay attention to the time indicators in the text. In Daniel 2, we are told generally when the Messiah will come, in the days of these kings. Daniel 7 then dovetails with this and presents a vision of an ascended Christ who will rule over all people, nations, and languages when the beasts have their dominion taken away. In Daniel 9, we're given a definite time period of 490 years. In Daniel 11, 32 to 35, there are three time indicators that seem to highlight a passage of time between the tyranny of Antiochus Epiphanes and the next willful king. So in summary, there are several areas of disagreement or problem passages of Daniel. These are as follows. Daniel 2, 44 and 45. Daniel 7, specifically the verses that deal with the ten horns and the little horn. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. Daniel 11, 36 through 45. And Daniel 12, 1 through 13. Now what's interesting about these time indicators that I just mentioned is that each one of them actually appears in one of these problem passages that no one can agree on. And it should come as no surprise that I interpret these passages as referring to first century Rome or the fourth kingdom of Daniel chapter two and seven. And what I'm gonna be doing in this series is to look at the preterist interpretation of this and also to critique some of the other interpretations, including some other alternate preterist interpretations that I don't agree with. I'd like you to consider this to be an intramural discussion among Christians. And if you have things you disagree with or questions that you have, you can put them below in the comments section. I'll be sure to deal with them in future videos. Thank you. Thank you.